I think Kamala Harris is very dumb. Who is like the, the tallest midget in the fucking dwarf village? All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Uncommon Sense. You have Anodris with you, and uh, also with you is the great, the infamous, the disastrous, the beautiful Arya. Great to be here, Anodris. What are we getting into today? Okay, I have a question for you. Do you think that Kamala Harris is dumb? I think Kamala Harris is very dumb for a presidential candidate. I think that she is possibly the dumbest presidential candidate ever. I won't say that definitively because I haven't thought through and, and list, but off the top of my head, I can't think of a person other than Trump, which I'll get to in a second, who has accomplished so little to the point where if you ask even her staunchest supporters, what has this person done as the vice president, they are stumped. And so I think that she stumbles over her words. She is in over her head. She has this, you know, way about her where it seems like the, the, her biggest skill set, shout out to her, is her ability to kind of make people believe in this image that she's this well put together, strong, confident woman. But I, I believe some of those reports that came out from, you know, her staff that said, look, this is a person that's running all over the place and is kind of manic about what's going on. She's not that confident person that she she's, you know, seems in front of you. Short answer, yes. I will say, given the circumstances, Kamala is dumb. Do you think there's a chance that this opinion is somewhat based on, like, a more base instinct that you just don't like her? And then, like, also, you know, it's a political choice, right? So you're justifying why you don't like her, why you think Trump, like who I would just based on what you said before, you think is also a flawed candidate in some ways, is maybe the better choice. Um, you think it comes from that at all? I think it's absolutely well I'll say it's a is a base instinct type thing that I just I, I just don't trust her. I don't like her. I don't trust her. I don't trust Trump in a different way. I don't trust Trump in a way that I feel comfortable with. I'm comfortable with the ways that I don't trust him because I know that I, I know that he is unpredictable and he has these, like, it's the, it's the idea that people believe that Kamala is this safe, you know, measured, you know, calm choice that rubs me the wrong way. And you're right, maybe that even makes me think she's dumber. But I've yet to see, I've yet to be blown away by her intelligence. My, my best justification as to why she's not an absolute moron is that it takes some level of, of complexity and thinking to just be able to advance as far as she has in a political way. But if, like, if I couldn't point to that thing, which there may be other circumstances for, I can't point to a policy she's put out. I can't point to a interview she's had. I, I, I can see a lot of points where she seems like a strong you know, person for 30 seconds or a minute clip. I've yet to see a cohesive argument for how she's going to lead the country. So even if it, if I, I do think it might be painted by my bias, so to speak, I can openly admit Trump is not a brilliant guy. But we have clear evidence that whether you like him or not, he got, he had a head start in life, no doubt about it. But look, the number of people that have gone from having a million dollars to a billion dollars is way less than the number of people that have gone from nothing to make a million dollars. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we're going to stop here. Because on that basis, right, okay, if you're saying Trump's ability to make money is like him being really, really smart, I don't think he started not from... really, really smart. So well, I just don't think he's, he's dumb, let's say. Right. It's evidence it's, that he's not dumb to me. Indicator of intelligence, right? Like, I think from, for him, right, he's a good example where, like, you know, he didn't start from a million dollars and make whatever, four billion or whatever he has, right? He, you know, the reports of how much he of how much he's actually inherited are not clear. But like, I think it's anywhere between two hundred million dollars to five hundred million dollars. What are we basing that on? Well, like he he wouldn't agree with that, right? I don't think he talks about it publicly at all because it doesn't serve him to talk about it. Well, his his line is, "I got a small loan of a million dollars from my dad." 
And right, but then I think like life. tax records and other leaked records, court records um, have shown that like he's inherited somewhere between like two hundred and five hundred million dollars because like some of these things were were exposed. I don't know if the full picture of it, but some of them were exposed in lawsuits that he had with all of his siblings over over inheritance. Right, so I guess like you know if somebody goes from you know two hundred million dollars to a few billion it's it's you know at least they didn't squander the family fortune but you probably could have just put that money into the s p and made basically the same amount of money like he's hold, not, on, hold on 25x at minimum well what if you're saying if it's if it's 200 million dollars yeah and it's 200 million dollars to 5 billion if he truly has four how what it does he even have four billion three okay he says 10 people say two call, split the difference call it it's even it would be six but call it five Okay, but if you if so between over thirty years, right? If you if you grow by ten percent, roughly, right, of, which is what the S and P. Yeah, I don't um, think you're getting close. Let's see. You're roughly at seventeen x. Um, over thirty years, yeah, over 17, thirty years, yeah, exactly. So, okay. so I don't think you can like. Okay, so I would just say like if we're just trying to point out things to say, wow, that's like an incredible thing. Like this is a because you're you your bar for Kamala of like demonstrated intelligence is obviously very high. It's like, I'm blown away by, by intelligence. Like I don't, wouldn't say I'm blown away by that. Yeah. You inherited 200, 200 million or 500 million or whatever. Maybe you should, maybe you X or 25 X, but you should have 20 X. So it's not like you just did something so beyond what, you know, what is expected. But I guess to me, I don't, have such a high bar of like what intel i know i don't think i have to be blown away by someone's intelligence like in person to in hindsight think that they're that they're intelligent like i think a lot of people's intelligence is not like apparent when you speak to them because they're just not very eloquent or not very confident people or whatever there's a ton of people like that. i can buy I mean, that a million fucking engineers who you know can't even look you in the eye but are clear geniuses. And that's, there's so many of them. I buy that. That said, those engineers have clear, hard evidence of this is something that person has done other than rise up some sort of social ladder. To be the best in the world or like whatever. Not like, the best in the world. But, but remember, she was, she, was actually, she was actually, in any comparison she's been in, she's actually been amongst the worst. The only time she's been on stage, she was the worst of the five or whatever she was, however many it was. She was, she, she, she was. Yeah, I mean, even the debate right before that, where she got dismantled by, by Kamala Harris or sorry, by Tulsi uh, Gabbard, she had an amazing moment against Biden. She moment. For, right. But what I'm saying is like, that's all you get in a debate, right? It took one moment to take her down. You'd have one moment where you rise up. For a, for a brief period, she was the leading candidate in that primary. The scoreboard is the scoreboard, right? Whatever you say, like you can't look at someone who's like from being the attorney general to a senator to a vice president to now the Democratic nominee and say like they're not successful. Like, I like, don't think she's not successful, but it, I stand it, by it she's a dumb. as successful as you can possibly be. So like you, the only way to describe that is like of all the politicians in the world, she is in the top. 10 in success and skill and outcome right and so it just seems like it seems strange to not same thing with trump too like you give that a lot of credit like he was elected president that's like i mean that's an incredible amount of skill which i mean to me is not necessarily because look like i don't assume any fucking politician is in this top echelon of intelligence i just don't think the smartest people in the world go become politicians and that's why all the fucking politicians work for the real smartest people in the world who go and make billions of dollars so i think we're talking about like within the, all the politicians we're talking about maybe like uh you know who is like the the tallest midget in the fucking dwarf village you know, like, so, but anyway, I just think the, like, like, it's, the things that you're saying are just, like, they're so clearly driven by your emotion around her. Disagree. Right? Like, Disagree. Okay. Disagree. She's, she's, I look at it like this, to put some numbers on it. I don't have evidence for this. This is just to, for, okay, for context, and no just knows this as well. The, the dumbest person in my high school graduating class was a certified genius. So I, I understand what 
high level intelligence looks like. And I understand what very low level intelligence looks like. I feel like I can more or less predict what an 100 level intelligence person for those who, for context, 100 is usually average level intelligence. One standard deviation away is 15 points, okay, in either direction. So if you go down to 85, you're in the bottom 16%. If you go up to 115, you're in the top 16%. If you go another standard deviation, now you're in the top 2.5%, bottom 2.5%. But my, my whole rationale around the Kamala thing is, do I think she's above average intelligence? Possibly yes. Okay. Do I think... I, do I think? Do I think? Do I think she's? Well, hold on. Do I think that she is above one fifteen? I would bet a, a lot that she is not above one fifteen. That's hilarious. I mean, I get it. I get where you're coming from. I mean, basically, like you do have a bent, whether it's totally logical or not. Your bent is that like she's a fucking idiot, and yeah, maybe she's like you know, 115, 110, you know, you and me will, will pretty much agree. If you're like average 100, 100 IQ intelligence, at least to us, we're really smart guys. You're a fucking moron, right? And so we're basically saying like, yeah, she's, she's slightly above average. Maybe. You're just what you're saying? Maybe. But most likely not. You would say, no, 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 I, I would likely. say she's in the, I guess to just to clarify my point, I would, if I had to place a number on her, I'm going to give her 105. I'm going to say she's above average, but but not demonstrably so. So you would say she's just barely more intelligent than, like, the person, the clerk at who fucking manages the 7-Eleven. That person's not 100. What do you think they are, then? I think that person, the clerk at, at a 7-Eleven, at if they're, like, a grown adult, I think that's, like, an 80 or less. But, you know, look, we don't want to obviously overgeneralize with yes. careers, but what is the career that you so would what's say? 100, what's 100 career? Um, As I would say, let's say 100. Lower, yeah, this is, this is going to be picking on some, somebody, but 100 career, I would, I would say, like, uh, somebody who does, like, a, a customer success job or a, uh, you know, base level marketing job, uh, not like they're leading a team or anything like that, or they own the whole function or anything like that, but they can manage a base level of complexity. They can get these campaigns out or what have you, or like the clerk at, at, uh, at 7-Eleven, I feel like you could, if you can teach somebody how to do something in a day, I feel like that job is not going to require a hundred IQ. hundred IQ, like, again, we're, we're assuming 50% of people are dumber than hundred IQ. So they're not, they're not total dunces, maybe relative to extremely intelligent people. Sure. They're, they seem like that, but a hundred IQ is like a, Okay, let me give you another context, and we'll get into this in a second because I, I know we want to talk about that. But I think, for example, somebody like a Bill Clinton, you tell me he's a 135, I'll believe that. I'll buy that. Uh, it, Barack it, Obama, even, I'll buy that. It's, and, and, and you know what? I think one bias I do have is I over, it's not so much the, it's not so much the comfort with speaking because to your point, engineers can be terrible speak even elon musk is not a great speaker but you clearly know whenever elon musk talks even if he stutters even if he doesn't he knows what he's saying there's no bullshit there it's clear he's not running around in circles there's there's a hard evidence behind every statement that he's making i just don't and maybe maybe I haven't heard. Thank you. so sorry to cut you off sorry my sorry. bad sorry I, I was yeah final thoughts i was like i don't i haven't seen a kamala clip where i look at it and i'm like Either, oh, that was some deep insight or, man, the way she thinks about strategy is really unique. And I think that's something that it's almost it's almost like we just pick somebody who is passable enough. I just yeah, I, I, I don't I don't feel confident if you told me, for example, I'm stuck on a desert island and the only person who could help me get off that island is Kamala. Not that this is, should be the test for president, but just as one proxy for it, I wouldn't have a lot of confidence. I don't think she's going to be the most resourceful person. I don't think that, like, uh, yeah, I just, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. I see, I feel like you're, see, I think ultimately what's interesting about intelligence is that oftentimes, you know, we understand that it's a, some kind of, it's like a mix of, you know, it's generally a, a measure of capacity, right? Like, uh, like capacity and, and raw ability, but I think sometimes we conflate it with skill, right? And then like those to me are all skills. Those are all it's all knowledge, comfort with 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 speaking, um, like and a, like 
you know, like someone's ability to make really high quality decisions, think super creatively, and then fucking win. Like that's my, to me, you know, measuring intelligence when someone's a kid makes sense. It's good to understand their capacity. It's good to, but like to me, the only way you really know intelligence is on, is, is in hindsight. You look at it and you're like, oh no, we were wrong. Whatever we fucking asked that kid was the wrong thing. You know, because he turned out to be a fucking idiot. Like, so, I don't know. I, again, I don't think she's a genius, but I, I tend to look at anybody at that super high level of politics who has had to make tons of really high quality decisions over the course of their career, over the course of, you know, 30 years. So, like, you know, for her, she's had to weave through being a fucking prosecutor to being, like, you know, then getting elected to uh, the DA's role in San Francisco, then going and doing that at the state level, then becoming a senator, then becoming vice president. And now, somehow, like in this moment where Joe Biden resigns, she has put herself in this position where she, you know, faced zero opposition to to become the president. If I did that, you would say, of course, I know Anuja Smart. That makes total sense. Right. So so I guess what's the difference? Right. It's like in hindsight, those it's like the scoreboard is clear. And I would say you could say make the same argument about Trump, even though I, I don't necessarily think like he's some particular genius for any one thing he's done. But I would say he's probably a 90, 95 percentile intelligence guy because you just can't make so many good decisions and execute so well without being. To me, I hear the intelligence as a or success as a representative of intelligence. And I generally agree with that. Do, however, think there are exceptions. And that's where I, I use the eye test over everything. And the eye test is not perfect, of course, because you're just not going to capture everything with that. But as a tiebreaker, like I won't believe something, even if there's stats to be, and this is going to be a controversial statement, so I'll preface it with that. I do not believe anything. If you can give me clear, cold, hard facts, fully in support of something, if it does not pass my own eye test, my own logic test. It doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't, it doesn't matter if all the laws of physics show something. Something needs to pass my internal test because otherwise I'm, I have no... Well, who is the ultimate judge in my own head? So when I, I say that to say, I look at Kamala, to use a basketball analogy, as her winning this primary is like Andre Iguodala winning the 2015 finals MVP in the sense that, yes, it's undeniable he was the finals MVP. He won it fair and square. It was voted and all that. But nobody could look back on that and say that he was the best player or even realistically, even with this hindsight, the most valuable player. Yet he still has in the record books what that is. I think we may see a similar situation with Kamala. She may well end up being the president in whatever, three months, but I don't think it's going to be a result of she did everything right. She obviously did some things right. Otherwise, she wouldn't be in this position. I do think she's, like I said, even even my not liking her. F. Curry that in this analogy, right, with Andre Iguodala, right? Obviously, he's not the best player, most valuable. Steph Curry was. What's the Steph Curry in her case? I guess that maybe there's not a perfect uh, uh, analogy to that. But in the sense, like, if, if Biden was not uh, incapacitated for the most part, I think Biden is a, is, a, is a clearly better candidate than her. You take away the incapacitation part, Biden, we can at least point to he was president, whether you agree or disagree, his proponents will support it, his you know, detractors will be against it. He has a 50 plus year record, again, whether you agree or disagree. We can point to these things and, okay, this is obvious. Like, whether, like I couldn't argue that Joe Biden is, I couldn't even make my personal take, I couldn't even make the argument that Joe Biden is close to average intelligence because he's shown this over the course of decades and made decisions and things have come down to him and he's won the big job and he's at least survived through those four years of doing the big job. So that's the difference. The, there's like the fact. The has, track record. It's, it's like, it's like do, I, do, oh. I, do I have faith in their track record? Like, you know, Biden spent 30 years in the Senate. Like obviously Kamala doesn't have that, but that's not like, I mean, there's a lot of people who spent 30 years in the Senate who, you know, have, and Biden's record was, he was not some super duper leader in the Senate. You know, he's kind of a middling, whatever kind of guy. Uh, his track record was, was, was mediocre. I think if anything, his track record was just so vanilla 
that he could become vice president, I think is actually the best. Enjoy, enjoy, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would also agree with, with, with Joe Biden, but I think you, like you talked about it, right? It's the eye test. I think with everybody, right? There is the, like, I totally understand, you know, that eye test, that sort of sniff test or vibe check, right? With, with people is so important. Like if you just don't like somebody, if you just don't trust them or whatever, my, contention is that I would say I wouldn't make the same point that other people make but I do think for sure that people will look to find the like the most extreme characterization of of their political opponent that's just what is happening right now and then you know they glom onto every possible thing and then they they create a set of justifications right and then in the end it's like it's the sniff test right which to me is like, is an easy way to allow a ton of bias, right? So if you just don't like women and you use that sniff test and you're just like not quite aware of it, someone could basically say the same thing you're saying and be sort of just naturally a sexist and then make the same exact points and then end up where you are, right? Which is basically, it's not what you're doing. Um, you're not a sexist, but a lot of people are. And a lot of people are racist. And she just happens to be a fucking black woman, too, you know? So I think that happens a lot here where, like, you know, it, and then the funny thing is that with men, it's actually a lot of hard, Even if they are stupider, it's harder to even make this argument. It's, like, not even a valid argument to make about uh, a Democratic political nominee, with maybe one exception being George Bush. And he had a demonstrated track record of idiocy you know like and like almost memeable idiocy you know and it just became a joke at a certain point otherwise with any male candidate it's it's like it's it's very difficult to make that argument just because just with the i mean i'm saying it even though i think she's pretty smart i just think with a man it's like it just like uh it doesn't quite make as much sense because of just so many so many sort of natural biases that i may hold you know like I can, I can say that honestly. I like, though it doesn't make as like, though it's not fair. I definitely give the argument that like this woman is kind of tough a lot more credence naturally. I can't explain why, but I do. Um, and I think a lot of people are like this too. I, I'm thinking back to, like, did you feel Hillary was dumb? No, I don't think Hillary's dumb. I don't think she's dumb. I think she's smart. That's why, and I know you say it's not me saying it, but I feel like. Do you feel like Sarah Palin was smart? No, I think she agree. was. Agree, agree. So th that's that, that, that's th th I. Th these are some of the eye test things where I don't feel like. I mean, they all achieved, let's say, roughly, approximately the same level of success. They're varying, but like approximately, let's say, they're all in the upper tier of fame. We know we're discussing their names ten years later, but yet I still think that there's there's a difference like it's not a um, i oversubscribe this is what i was gonna say earlier is i oversubscribe to the coherent speaker not confident speaker confident speaker actually may cover up an incoherent speaker and i think kamala has aspects of that where she actually i think is a good speaker in that she sounds very presidential it's 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 confident it's straightforward but it, if you like actually like look at the if you just looked at the transcript you'd be like well, what is she, what is she saying right here? Like, what, okay, so so what? You just said this stuff. It sounded great on the clip, and I feel like let me ask you this: Is there something? I know you're not defending her as the smartest, but is there something that she's done that you feel like, okay, this convinced me that okay, she's at least over this threshold that I feel confident as her leading, you, you know, the the country. Yeah, I think she's just as smart as all those other fucking idiots. Um, okay, that's what what, idiot. what is, is there something she did? Or something she show or whatever. Like what 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 threw, threw you over that line? Or did she autom she start over the line? Yeah, she's like, well, like yeah, there's nothing in particular. I, I don't think there's any one sentence. I don't look. I've I've a fucking degree in politics. You know, I've worked for po political campaigns. I've spent a lot of time thinking and reading and and observing politics. Right. I I the one thing I definitely don't do is like there's no one thing a candidate can say to make me change my opinion about them. Like like unless it's a very specific opinion on something that I disagree with. Just because, I mean, like, you're going to be in any number of scenarios, right? That that one interview you heard of Trump, you know, stumbling could have been just like this horribly contentious, 
bullshit interview he did with MSNBC. And at the same time, this great cogent statement that Trump made could have been totally prepared because he was in a softball interview with somebody who loves him. You know, like both of those things can can happen. But yeah, like there's no one thing that I've seen of hers. I think she has exceptional, exceptional speech making skills. She's made some incredible speeches throughout her career that have helped propel her forward, right? Those are obviously at any one stage, that's usually a key thing that gets you to the next stage, right? So like she's, in, she's, I don't know where to rank her, but she's world class in that. Um, and then, you know, she's like had to go through 30 years again or whatever of just consistent rise um, in a super complex field to do that. in. Like rising in politics, I think it takes a lot of intelligence because it's so complex and 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 there's no there's no set path to it you have to blaze a path and it's not like she comes from some fucking political dynasty you know her parents were nothing you know her parents were you know professors or whatever they were just just regular people and she had to figure it out all on her own so it's really just the track record that just makes me think i don't think she's like that intel i don't think she's a genius i don't think we need geniuses to be politicians i i think we need people who have other skills whether she can like go and pass things and she can she can um you know amass more political power and and get things done i'm not sure um i'm not sure about that with trump either but i don't think that really is um about intelligence so again like i guess to wrap up like it's just a track record of 30 years of consistently good choices and then um and 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 some things that she's world class in that make me assume she's just just as smart as anybody else at that echelon let's lead with that talking about two different candidates one potential president who are five dumbest presidents of all time think okay so i don't necessarily have a top five so I'll, I'll rattle off a few that i think are there's just one that i think is really dumb i think george bush is a real fucking idiot and i think the core of it is just that he was just as close to a trust fund baby in politics as has ever existed and and you know like he, he got elected 10 years after his father or less than 10 years after his father left office a bunch of people who ran his campaign or just like former operatives of his father um and just seemed to like package this guy up and put him on the stage and then unless if i didn't hear him talk over the course of his presidency i would have said the same thing uh, i was like yeah he's maybe a little bit dumber than some other guys but he's probably i don't know just as smart he's just maybe a kind of a, a doofus you know um, he seems just as smart, but it just seems like, like over and over and over again, both in the decisions he made as a president and in the, just the things he says just is fucking stupid. And on top of that is the only president to ever really be seen to, to have less power than his vice president. I think it has to be the number one by far. I put Bush up there, although I do think he gets a bad rap because everything is so memeable. I mean, the guy did go to, if I'm not mistaken, Yale. Granted, trust fund baby, sure, but he still had to go through the classes. So I, I would say, in a similar vein, I still wouldn't put him as below average intelligence, simply because I just it would be difficult for a below average person to graduate, but he's the obvious choice. Another one I'll throw out there is, is Gerald Ford, and obviously I wasn't around for Gerald Ford, but everything I read about him how he handled the economy, how he handled kind of the, the whole Nixon thing or, you know, the aftermath of that just seems like a dumb guy. Yeah, I, I think, you know, in terms of recent history, he's he's who I would go with. Yeah, Ford, I mean, I don't know. I He was like, you know, Ford is, I think, the only person to have become president without being elected president. I believe so. Um, he's an interesting guy. And I think former Speaker of the House at one point, too. So obviously, like, had some intelligence and skill, but just, it's so interesting. Some people, they just can't, they just can't make it at that next level. You know, they can lead Congress, but then to be the president is just another fucking level. So I don't know if I, how dumb he was. I didn't really study him too much, but yeah, see, definitely 
seems like up there. But to be honest with you, I don't know. Just seems like maybe there's not that many dumb presidents. You know? not, that's why, it's, yeah, it's dumbest of presidents. Like, I think we we all will acknowledge everybody here is above average, or above 100 IQ. Uh, it's just a matter of how far above that. I'll throw one more out there. Okay. People may not like this, but JF. Huge. Okay. Explain. JF. JFK is one of the dumbest presidents of all time. Let's hear it. Yeah. And again, you know, you don't get that dumb if you're elected president, you know. But again, I feel like he's a similar story to Bush where he was just so guided by his family, just propelled forward by his family. You know, there are reports that like he had so little control over his own transition that like his he didn't want to name his own brother to be attorney general. But his dad forced him to, you know, and somehow like he's he's the president. But his dad, Joe Kennedy, who is the SEC chairman, a former ambassador to England, but just generally a super rich and powerful guy and the patriarch of their family, you know, was somehow able to like call the shots there. Right. And that's I mean, that's the vibe. Like, it seems like even through his presidency, Joe Kennedy had a huge role. And, you know, even during his presidency, he made his brother. RFK, who is not, would have been one of our smartest presidents ever if he was elected, and was effectively like his chief advisor, you know, the number two guy in the president that was actually the one wheeling and dealing and, and going and making a lot of things happen. But yeah, JFK, I think relatively dumb and just propelled forward by his family. Huge. Okay, let's flip it to the other side. Smartest presidents. This is, yeah, this is a good one. I think I put one guy, at the, I put two guys in a class of their own. One guy at the top of the list, but I'm curious to hear yours. Yeah, no, who, who, what about okay. you? So I'll put the person I think just raw horsepower, the smartest president ever, uh, based on everything I've read, is Thomas Jefferson. A brilliant person by every account. I believe he was 21 when he drafted the Declaration of Independence, um, or was the primary drafter of it. Uh, just law, philosophy, politics, architecture, science, everything. The guy, the guy, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of the goats. And then obviously became, I mean, even he would, he would be, he was a founding father before he even became president and had served two terms as president. I think he's, he's definitely up there from a raw talent standpoint. And then somebody that I put up there because of, I actually agree with your definition of intelligence, or at least a definition of intelligence, which is basically do you get what you want out of life or to what degree can you kind of impact the things that you want to impact? And for that, I'll put Lincoln because I just think he was dealt the toughest set of cards for any individual president or more appropriately, I think he made the most of an extremely difficult set of cards. And yeah, for that reason, just being able to manage all that and keep things together and arguably the, the most trying time in the history of the country, I give it up to him. He, he must have been clearly intelligent you know even if it's not in a purely book smart way yeah uh three that come to mind so one that's i feel like doesn't get a lot of love is john adams one term president so a bit of a knock there however he was defeated by someone who i agree is maybe the smartest john thomas jefferson but you know i think if you look at the founding of our country, right, there were really two major political wings because Washington was a bit of a dumbass and he didn't, not truly dumbass, but just, I think, lacked some forethought and didn't necessarily think through political parties, right? But then, you know, Adams and, and um, you know, and Jefferson, though Adams wasn't necessarily the head of the Federalist Party, you know, him and Jefferson seem to represent just these two major wings and two schools of thought in our government, right? And so oftentimes, like, you know, I think there's a saying, like, George Washington sort of fought for the revolution, right? But then Thomas Jefferson and John Adams fought for the revolution. And so just, I think, the the skill it took to go and win the revolution, right, was Trump, John Adams was a huge part of that. Um, and then afterward, all of the skill in setting up the government, becoming elected or getting elected president, being our first vice president too. Yeah, d not given enough love. Although, a uh, shout out to the HBO miniseries John Adams because it it definitely highlighted that he was he was pretty dope. Uh, another one based, I think, similar reasoning to the Lincoln one that I like is uh, is FDR. 
you know, he came from a somewhat rich family and he's related to Teddy Roosevelt. So maybe there's like some of that nepotism knock you can give him. But the guy had fucking polio, you know, he was in a wheelchair and was elected president. And if he just wasn't sick, he would have just been president. And he was president for life once he became president. So and he didn't die prematurely in office. He died after four elections. So incredibly successful in everything he did also being you know introduced a whole new philosophy and a school of thought almost to our politics that dominated politics for for you know a generation and his ideas like and have still endure today you know like his policies are some of the most popular and untouchable that exist so again like it's not all about success but i do think that had not being able to see him in person, those are the things that jump out as like, wow, just incredibly impressive. And then you had one more, right? One more is, um, is, you know, I don't necessarily think there's anything I've seen that's like, wow, he's a fucking genius, is Obama. The reason being is that he's the only politician that, like, in interviews with from other people who are in his administration or who are opponents of his even in some cases, have like remarked on his intelligence as a very odd and defining characteristic where they talk about, oh, he has this incredible skill, he's an amazing orator, all this stuff. But I've heard multiple people describe his intelligence specifically. So just so unique that you often don't hear it on the other side. You hear people are dumb, you hear that a lot, but like these specific examples of his intelligence, you know, like, yeah, we know we're sitting in this room and he's able to recall just like, these facts about a case that even you know people whose job it was to know that didn't understand those numbers right like those kinds of things like you said right there are these moments of sort of demonstrable intelligence which i've never seen obviously because i don't know him but for people who do know him they seem to really jump out a lot so that one i mean I'm not sure what it is but he seems to be like like head or head and shoulders smarter than most other presidents i i generally again it's not a thing he did necessarily. It's more eye test. And again, I oversubscribe to you have coherent thought. He's not only an eloquent, eloquent speaker, but he's a coherent thinker and speaker. And so I give a lot of credit to that. I just think clear thinking is a sign of intelligence. It doesn't have to be clear speaking because again, oftentimes, you know, the, the, the best thinkers are not able to, to properly communicate that, but uh, he is somebody who, who does both well. Um, okay. I have a question for you. You have 15 points to distribute. We're basically building our president. You have 15 points to distribute across the three categories. Each category can be between zero and 10, 10 being the best, five being average. Um, The three categories when you're building your presidential candidate are intelligence. Second category is leadership slash political savvy. Third category is integrity. How do you distribute your points and why? Yeah, we talked about this on a previous episode, you know, like I'm all about optimizing as much as possible for what's important. And for me, I would say the most important thing is just their political savvy. My premise is just I want a president who is going to amass more political power and then get the things that I want done. Right. So I'm voting for them because they see eye to eye with me on what should get done and their ability to get those things done to a greater and greater extent over time is what I'm looking for. So that's number one. So just as a start, I would probably just put 10 points to that. Okay. Um, with my bet being, okay, you're just like, okay, so you're 10. You basically, no matter what, like every election, you just go and and uh, think, you know, you uh, you just keep growing. I guess let me clear, let me ask you this. What are you optimizing for? Are you optimizing for that candidate winning or are you optimizing for the, best outcome for the country what are you optimizing for well like them winning of course which is part of the savvy but then also i think getting things done and then continuing to amass more and more power and support that's also so so from the from perspective of the president you're optimizing their skill set right would your answer be different if i said what about if you're trying to optimize for the country or no well, I am sort of in a sense, okay, right? Okay, because, okay. because this is for the candidate that I would support, right? And then I, would, I guess, for my own interests and the interests of the country, I, that's why I'm supporting them. And then, and then, their savvy though is somewhat separate, right? Like, 
you know, like take Bernie Sanders. You might agree with him, but his political savvy is you know, not at the highest, obviously. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't win, right? He's very, very high, but yeah. like didn't win. So I guess like I would want the highest, right? The person who's not only going to win, but just fucking like, you know, FDR level political savvy, whatever that is, you know? Like, yeah. Then your goat level. level. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Because, because he's like nine, let's say, right? 9.5. This guy's 10. Okay. So then I would say maybe I'll revisit the, the savvy thing. Intelligence, I'd probably say zero in this case. Yeah. Uh, and then the other is integrity, because if he's a zero integrity, right, it's like this guy is just like savvy, but then like amassing power for themselves and doing crazy shit. Right. But I think that, you know, the integrity part to me is like, OK, average integrity means like they're going to stick to like a lot. Most of what they say, a lot of what they say, I would I would I would say like average integrity is what like most of these presidents are, which they're not bad people. They're just normal, you know. They flip flop on some things. They lie about some things, but generally speaking, they're like pretty honest, you know, balanced, right? Like, is that fair? Yeah, no, I think so. I I don't think you have obvious cases, despite either party saying so, that a president has been egregiously, uh, you know, you know, whatever, taking advantage of of their position. So yeah, I would agree they're mostly of average integrity. I'll answer it in two ways. One is for the benefiting myself or the candidate themselves. I'll go 10 political savvy, five intelligence <laughs> for a similar reason of the leadership. The political savvy one is the obvious one. Like if you want to amass the most power, you need the most political, you know, savvy slash leadership intelligence because whatever, I would at least try to max out that as far as possible. However, if I was going for the benefit of the country, then I feel like I would have to go integrity, if not 10, yeah, nine or, or, or something very close so that even if I'm a one-term president or what have you that is not able to get there, you bring up a good point. It all depends on tiers because if, like, if, it's a, if a six has no chance of even becoming president and like Bernie Sanders was a nine, then it's a moot point anyway and you have to give 10 to that. But let's say assuming we're looking, five is average for a president, then I would go six political savvy and nine integrity because I think somebody... I honestly think if somebody intelligent, I guess we don't have intelligence, but I was going to say if somebody intelligent had the right uh, motivations for the country uh, and had political savvy, they'd be able to move a lot of things forward. But obviously, we're talking about 30 points right there. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is there a certain point at which too much integrity, like it, 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 it all, it, these are all intrinsic variables with one another, right? But like at some point, is too much integrity bad or like, getting shit done and that's, being... that's why i thought about the the nine instead of ten uh, where if, you, if you're ten you, you just you, exactly you're 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 too much within the rules like i want my politicians i mean i want them to tell the truth but like i don't want a guy who won't, yeah and i don't want somebody who's like to use the metaphor of even when nobody's around you're not going above 35 miles an hour or something like that yeah like, you have to be able to you know break the rules sometimes exactly uh, like you have to be dirty, you know? You gotta be able to call senators into your office and threaten to expose, you know, their fucking affairs, right? Like, be, that's the type of president I want who, who is willing to do anything. Get oh, down yeah. into the dirt and, you know, have a knife fight with Putin or the right, ra- whatever it is, you know? And, like, so I guess, like, I tend to think of my president sometimes as this, like, dirty knife fighter and so that's why these like you know these superstar presidential candidates don't really do it for me you know but not trump you know though i'm not a trump supporter you know and he he is very fat but like he is a knife fighter you know give him a knife yeah give him a comfortable chair to sit on he won't get it but you know and shit like that yeah comfortable chair maybe some mcdonald breaks he'll fight you with a knife for sure yeah, 100%. Got to respect that. Um, All right, with that, yeah, I think that's it, huh? Okay, everybody, thanks a lot. This is, That's it for another episode. Um, remember to catch us everywhere where you listen to podcasts. YouTube is, should be up by the time you're listening to this episode. See you next time. See you guys.